early on in his legal career, uh, does the assimilated Judah Benjamin, um, does he encounter anti-Semitism at all in New Orleans? So, you know, New Orleans was a great place to go. Um, not because it had a big Jewish community. It didn't. That happens later in the 1840s and 1850s. But it was an open city. It was a city that, like New York, it was in some sense a port city and kind of the New York of the South. People of every kind washed through the city. And so it was very much, if you could make it here, you could make it anywhere kind of place. And there may have been a, a, a kind of interesting racial element, which is to say, so New Orleans quite unusually had an infinite gradation of racial categories. Unlike the white black, the, the existentially divided white black world in the, in the rest of the South, New Orleans had very large numbers of freed blacks. It had very large numbers of quadroons or octoroons to use the word they would use for a quarter or a half black. Indeed, it had racial categories that didn't exist anywhere, like someone who was 63rd, 64, 63rd, 64th black or, or white. Um, so I, I wonder if I speculate that given the tension between the need to maintain a kind of absolute racial line to just to, to reinforce, I mean, it was necessary. How could you have a slave world if you didn't say there was an absolute distinction between whites and blacks, but, but to maintain that in this world of, of, of blended racial blendedness, then I think it became, became important for fully white people of whatever kind, including Jews, to fall into the white category, as opposed to the not quite white category that Jews fell into in the North. So anti-Semitism, he, he, he didn't face not, not because, he, he, on in life. because he's white and he's white. Right, so not then. The, I would say the higher he climbs in the hierarchy, the more of a public figure he is, the more virulent the anti-Semitism becomes. And so by the time he becomes a senator, that's what he does after he, his legal career in New Orleans, and he goes to Washington, uh, Southerners in their diaries and in their letters uh, make plenty of snide comments about this, this uh, ambitious Jew. And then we can talk about his yet later career because certainly in the Civil War, when he's a Confederate, cabinet member. And when things start going bad, he plays the classic Jewish role of the scapegoat. 